So, hey, we're going again with Flint Eagle. Yeah, baby. Good Thanks morning. For, thanks for coming, brother. That's uh, more than a pleasure being here. <laughs> it's wild, man. It's cool. Thanks for coming out. So, um, this is the first podcast that I will have done wearing my Kakui nuts that you gave me a year ago on Mayor of Kingstown. They look beautiful on you. Thank you very much. They And likewise, uh, can you tell me what this is about? Well, um, the Kakui nuts, um, they were for thousands and thousands of years um, only worn by the Kamehamehas, who were the royalty of the uh, Polynesian peoples, and the Kahunas, who were the spiritual leaders of the Polynesian peoples. And in 1810, the British and Dutch government outlawed them. And because of the belief, the following oh, okay. of them was so great that it could not be broken. They and this, Mike in there. and this is this is a belief. Um, it, it was not a belief. It was a knowledge. It was a knowing um, what the Kukui nuts brought and what they possessed. Um, they sustained <clears throat> the Polynesian peoples. Inside the Kukui nut was an oil, or is an oil um, that they use for so many different purposes. As well, um, the Kamehamehas and the Kahunas were the only ones with the knowledge, um, the ancient knowledge, to wield the power that the Kukui nuts attracted. And it, it was known that they attract the, the power of fertility and creation from the universe. And that being said, again, only the Kamehamehas and the Kahunas had the knowledge to wield that power and the wisdom to wield that power. And the British and Dutch governments outlawed them in 1810, forcing the Kamehamehas and Kahunas public, in public, rounded them up, forced them at gunpoint to remove them. And if they refused to remove them, they were imprisoned to 10 years of hard labor. And if they came out of prison and put them back on, they were publicly beheaded. And um, now... It doesn't sound so far from the real world today. I know. It isn't, is it? <laughs> and, um, but today... Um, sadly enough, um, the, the following in the traditions of the Kukui nut has, has faded as well as many cultures, knowledge of many cultures and their traditions and their spiritualities have faded. Um, and you know, now it's more of a, a, a tourist, um, sure tourist thing like a lot of things yeah like a lot of things it's a it's a tourist thing however um you know to <clears> the <throat> devote um should we say to the devote it's like i i don't want to say believers but because to believe is to have doubt that there is room for a doubt if you believe in anything it means you're not certain um the so and it is i am i am absolutely certain of their certainty Right. Of their ancient certainty. Um, again, <clears throat> it being a knowledge, not a belief. Come in a little closer if you can, Flint. It being a knowledge, we, yeah, yeah, not there a we belief. Go. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have to move to the mic. <laughs> yeah. You can move the mic to you. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah just, true. How about I just get a rubber band tied around my neck? And that way it follows <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm enjoying <laughs> hey, this. I know everyone guy? else will, too. <laughs> However, that is um, that is the, shall we say, the legend yeah. of the Kukui nut. Very cool. So those are real. That's not These a These are real. And, and they are not polished. It is, it is the oil <clears throat> itself that polishes them. And um, they you, come in you many, can touch mine if you want. Many, many different, different colors. Yeah. And that is, huh. depends on the richness of the volcanic ash in the soil. Richness right. of the soil. Right. Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. Now, go. I remember when you gave them to me, I wore them that evening. And to be completely frank, I have not worn them out anywhere else. I, I keep them as a keepsake and, and a remembrance, but um, um, you rocked them so well, man. I don't know if I could. Oh yeah, man. you got the chunky jewelry thing going down like no problem. That's my because I'm chunky. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, whatever's going on. Yeah, you got a badass style, dude. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Let's man. see your hands. Show them. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, man. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ready to roll. I'll tell you. That's Flint. So, yeah. hey, listen, okay, so for the listening audience and people who are viewing this, uh, they need to know you're an incredibly talented stunt man and stunt coordinator. No, oh, thank you. Uh, no, it's just what you are. It's just a fact. The, um, um, where did that all start, bud? Like, where, where are you from originally? You... Well, um, I hail from Gunhawage. It's a Mohawk reservation just outside of Montreal. However, um, 
tragedy had befelled my family. Um, my parents were murdered when I was a little boy. Um, and um, the government wasn't allowing me. They had actually placed me in a residential school um, for the year during the investigation of my parents' demise. And um, which was, and you know, everything, everything they say about what occurred and what had occurred in the residential schools is absolutely true. Um, I, I, I can't, um, I, I don't want to remember it. Um, so, um, the, the government was placing me in a res a full-time residential school in Alberta after the year, um, of investigation of my parents' demise. And, um, my grandmother, uh, my father's mother, you know, in Ganalage, um, she had begged the, uh, the government, she had begged them to let me, to let her see me one more day, just to spend a day with me. And they agreed, so they brought me to my grandmother um, in Ganawage, um on a Friday morning. And my grandmother... She waited until they left. Then she she wept and she told me the story, and and she tied a cardboard, cut a piece of cardboard, put my grandmother's, my mother's mother, um, had moved to Florida, and put her name, address, and phone number on this cardboard, and tied it around my neck. Mm. And how old would you have been? Um, I was I, w I was six on the verge of seven. <clears throat> okay. And, um, Jeez, man. and <clears throat> she took me to the airport, put me on the airplane. And, and of course I'm this little baby boy. I'm scared. Um, not knowing what's happening, you know, because at that time I only spoke Mohawk. Okay. Broken English. Um, and so I went anyway, so I landed in Florida um, the, 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 and I tell you the air, the airport staff, the uh, stewardesses, they were so, so I remember them being so caring and so amazing and so comforting. And they called my grandmother. My grandmother came and picked me up and uh, I was raised in Florida, in okay. swamps in Florida. Okay. Um, I was rescued. My grandmother had, had, um, abducted me from the government's hands, their clutches and the church's clutches. And she said, if you cannot be with us, at least you will be with family. She said, because I know if they take you, they will kill you. I will never see you again. Um, Jesus, man. Hence, um, my, my father was Don Eagle. He was um, the world, he held the world title um, as the world heavyweight wrestling champion. He was also Golden Gloves professional boxer, uh, my grandfather was Golden Gloves professional boxer, his father, and um, he was also world middle heavyweight wrestling champion. My mother, she was a, an artist uh, slash model um, turned fighter um, after meeting my father. However, um, then she bore me. And uh, so, you know, growing up in Florida, my father was so famous, everybody... Everybody knew my father, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> I guess being thrust, pardon me, into an unknown, um, it's like it's like everybody, every adult, um, the parents of the children I went to school with would tell their children to invite me to uh, dinner. Because they wanted to meet the son of Don Eagle. Okay, so and now were these, <clears throat> were, sorry, were these people also native? No, 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 no. Okay, it was all non-native. Okay, so where you went in Florida was not to a reservation. Correct. Okay. It was it, it was <clears throat> actually to a small farm in the midst of a swamp. Okay. In a place called Palm Harbor, Florida. Okay. Um, um, where also my umbilical cord is buried. So it, it, in our tradition where it is, will always be your home. So it is always to me, my home. Okay. A, one of my homes. Um, because with you is another one. <laughs> is that where you go? Is that where you head to 
I ate it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, because it's like my boys are there, my posse's there. Yeah, I, mean, right. I grew up with for this sure. There. Yeah, and um, nonetheless, um, the during school, um, all the kids would chase me at recess, um, throwing sticks and rocks at me, screaming, "Get the Indian! Get the Indian!" Jesus. And the wow. teachers allowed it. Um, again, you know, this is Southern Florida. This was very, 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 uh, uh, you know. A, a racist state mm -hmm. um and the parents would invite have their children invite me over um to again to they wanted to meet the son of don eagle and tell their stories but they also wanted their children to fight me um the the reality <clears throat> was um you know i had to i i there was not a day i didn't have to fight and uh, i remember um, it, it was like the turning point was, um, this beautiful, um, girl named Susan Wackoltz, um, the sister of Steve Wackoltz, who is known as Doc Wackoltz from Sabotage, um, the drummer, the lead drummer for Sabotage. Okay. And, um, anyway, they're twins. Um, and as children, like they were dear friends of mine, um, due to the fact that, I'm running. Um, I'm in Palm Harbor Middle School. All the kids are chasing me. Now, this has gone up to middle school. And it seemed to be, uh, you know, the pastime, get the Indian. And uh, the I heard her voice as if there was no other sound. And she screamed out, Flint, don't run. And... I stopped and is just in my tracks. I turned around with my fist balled and the first kid that came in, boom, laid him out. And the next kid, boom, one punch, laid him out. And then, you know, they all gather around. And then, of course, then the teachers intervened and I got sent to the principal's office sure. after all these years, um, of which um, my grandmother did not tolerate it. She... My grandfather had this little joke, he and I, and he would always say that I was the only hell that my grandmother ever raised. And then we would laugh profusely <laughs> it's because, really good. because she was hellfire and damnation. <laughs> wow. If there was hell in me, I inherited it from her. Um, <laughs> yeah, then, um, yeah. And, you know, and that's when everything changed. And again, fighting was expected of me. So um, I started training fighting. Um, this, that, this, that, um, later in years, um, I became disenchanted because I started losing, um, when you're in a group, when you're in like, for instance, stunts, um, and you have to, you end up fighting your own, your, your friends, your best friends in the arena. And because you train with them and you never really, you, you, you know, you don't go all out. You don't want to hurt them and stuff sure. like that. And so they think they have it on you. They have an edge on you. And, you know, it got to the point where, you know, I'm asking them to tap out and they're saying not friendly things to me. Um, you know, it was always F you and, you know, uh, and so I would always have to hurt them a little bit to get them to concede. And I ended up losing everyone that that was my friend in the fight circle i lost and i became disheartened disenchanted and so i stopped fighting i started doing triathlons started racing uh you know doing century century and a half races on bikes and stuff like that and um time went on um not that much time and um, my grandmother, I had, I, I was in college. Um, I went to uh, several different colleges, but I was in St. Pete College um, in Clearwater, Florida. The branch was in Clearwater, Florida, and a smaller one in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And um, I get, received a phone call um, from my grandmother's doctor in Montreal. And uh, he said, you know, um, your grandmother is dying. Um, you know, 
if you want to see her, she's asking for you. If you, and I hadn't seen her since I was like seven years old, wow, a little boy, and um, so I I dropped everything, and I went to be with my grandmother, and um, we, and the doctor said that you know she could die any moment. That um, um, he gave her maximum when I arrived a week. And as soon as we saw each other, it was just like tears of joy. And she came back to life. And I took her home. And, and, and we were together 24 hours a day for six months. Wow. Before she passed. And, uh, it, it, and she would tell you know all her friends in Mohawk that her buddy had come home. And Buddy it was her pet name for my father. Okay. And, um, hmm. yeah. So, um, this is the lady that saved your life. Yes. Yeah. Both of them, both my grandmothers. Yes, of course. But yeah, the, she was yes. the one who spirited me away. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Wow. Man. So that I would live. Quite wow. a story. Um, um, take your time. Did other children yeah. go through what you went through? Um, too many. Yeah. I mean, in your, yeah, sorry, yeah, maybe in your circle, in your community. Oh, yeah. Where you grew up. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it is something, it, it was not isolated <clears throat> to a single group or a single nation. All Native American, North American Native children um, at that time suffered it. Literally, literally, um, they believe... It is, it is said that the last official residential school closed in 1996, but it was actually 2002 when the last official residential school was closed. And where was that? Do you know? Here in Canada. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it, it, it's hard to go down that road I know. Without, you know, without, without emotion and, and rage. I don't mind the emotion and the rage I, because it's an incredibly important subject to get to the bottom of and uh canada is now they think they've repaired this no there there is they they have done nothing they have not even what they have said and what they have attempted is not even a bandage on a gaping wound on a limb that has severed they it's like you know they they think they can put a couple dabs of crazy glue and that's what i call it crazy crazy fucking glue yeah you know, how how rude, how insulting, not only the church, but the government. What what people have seemed to have forgotten, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, when he took office, he took charge of the residential schools under his term. Yeah. And the residential, the atrocities did not only continue, but they increased under his reign, and I call it a reign. Um, and, and and nobody talks about that, especially not uh, this Trudeau boy who's uh, holding his father's office. Who's that again? Yeah, the, oh, yeah. the kid pretending to be a leader. Yeah, the, the child pretending <clears throat> to be a man. Yeah. Um, however, his brother is is an incredible man. He has, he has another brother, <clears throat> um, uh, Sasha, Alex, and I've worked with him, and he he and his family are beautiful. I really, really, really love them. Um, yeah, um, I don't know what happened to the other kid. Yeah, uh, you know, he's his father's shadow, I guess. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, um, you know, it is it, it is it, it cannot be repaired. You, um, I. As a child, from the age of a child, um, I, I, um, I was filled with shame, not only by the government, by the church. They that I that that at one point I was ashamed of being born. I was ashamed of who I was. That they had constantly told me that and called me a savage. Um, a heathen, um, and they're they're doing this to a child. They're doing this to thousands of children, and I spent 
Um, why would the, why, why? I, I, I don't get it. Why? Well, um, because for one, we were everything they would never be. We had everything they could never possess. Um, we were, um, it's it's hard to describe mm -hmm. and i don't really know what goes on in the minds of of society of the, of the government of of these religions um and you know well the the the, the catholic church it was not just the Catholic. It was the Protestants. Okay. It was the Jesuits. It was uh, almost every religion participated in this extermination. Um, because they figured you guys weren't, the, the Native community wasn't a part of their religion, so they're trying to turn it? Um, uh, that and so much more. Um, yeah, forgive my ignorance. Yeah, it, um, their, their idea, um, uh, quoting... Um, kill the Indian, save the man. Um, that to we, we as a, as a, as nations, we as peoples, we as North American Aboriginal were born, were truly born to be free. We were born pure. Um, the, yeah. pardon, pardon me, the coffee. <clears throat> However, um, You know, people, you know, and I don't want to condemn my own people. However, we have those Christian Indians. Um, they, everything that they did to us was in the name of their religions, name of their Christ, name of, in their Bible, um, of which I had studied profusely. Um, yeah, it's... Which you studied because they made you? Well... Um, initially because they made me and there was a time, um, that I was going to be, um, I, I had strove to be a Southern Baptist preacher. Oh, okay. I went to Trinity Bible mm -hmm. University for several years until they ostracized me because, um, the books in the Bible, they contradict each other. And so I started noti noticing this pattern. So in the midst of the, of one of the lectures, um, they had made a false statement and I contradicted it with another book and, um, they told the students and the faculty that I was a demon sent there to distract and lead the students and faculty astray. And they could not kick me out because I paid my tuition. So they ostracized me. They forbade the students and the faculty to acknowledge me and, Hmm. So I, wow. I, I was there maybe another two weeks, and in my frustration, I, I said my piece and got up and walked out. And, um, you know, and seeing, um, you know, because I was seeking answers. I was seeking, you know, because um, three quarters of my life, um, there was not a day that went by that I had not contemplated suicide. Um, and because I was taught that it was a mortal sin, of which it is not, um, I, I believed that, that to take my own life was wrong. Right. And so I put myself in mortal danger on a near daily basis. I used to... Um, attack alligators in the swamps. I used to, that was like, you know, and everybody, it's like you ask all my boys in Florida, they will tell you the stories. I used to wait over rivers in, in Florida, you know, in trees, you know, Spanish oaks that strung over the river, waiting for a gator, and then I would jump on the back of the gator, you know, thinking, okay, eventually somebody's going to kill me, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself in that because of that, that death wish that I had, um, but not wanting to take my own life. So I thought, you know, it, I could get a gator to do it. I could get, you know, some wild animal to do it. So um, then, you know, I, I grew up 
you know, this wild boy, still a wild boy, still, still Ungwehungwe, still Haudenosaunee, still Mohawk, Kanyankehaga in my heart. And, um, And I, I think that was also in the beginning years. I've been doing stunts full time um, for 32 years. And, but there was always that death wish. i um, thinking, you know, maybe this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is going to do it. You know, maybe this gag is going to do it. And, um, but I never, it's like I never entered um, that death wish willingly. I thought I will fight, you know, and if something, something will prove to be greater than I, it will win. However, um, as the challenges arose, no challenge was greater. Um, and I, I believe it was an innate, um, also like my ancestors, um, that innate will to survive. And it is that innate will that we are here today, that we are not wiped out, that, that we have not been rubbed out by the government, by the, by the societies Absolutely. that have risen around us. Uh, yet it is for myself and for Native North Americans um, a constant, constant struggle to survive. Um, and the governments, the churches, the societies have, they have been determined in our extinction, um, whether it be sociologically, culturally, spiritually, um, we battle for our survival every day. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, it is a constant. Um, and unless you are Ungwehungwe, unless you are Native American, um, it, it is hard to understand. Um, have you outgrown the death wish? I have, I have, and uh, um, I don't know anyone who walks around with such joy. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Like, no, I mean, I am just people don't know you as well as I do, and you are. Hands down, the most joyous, um, accepting, loving uh, person I know. Huh. The uh, tears of a clown. Um. Okay. That hurts me. I, I remember everything. I... And I remember how much I am loved and have been loved and the sacrifices that were made that I would be alive, that I would not be rubbed out. Um, and those, the, the, the love of the people in my life, such as yourself, thank you for loving me. Um, and the love of my puppies, yeah. the love, um, that is what fills my heart. And for the most of my life now, it's like, um, I feel it constantly and my heart wants to burst, um, now, is it, I mean, to some degree you must, I, I mean, when you're, when you're hit with tragedy, it's hard to see through certain things, but you must realize that a lot of this is just fake, silly bullshit. I, I, I don't know if that makes, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's like this, this, uh, false hate, it's all. Um, it's just the world is consumed with with false hate um, the it is it is more that I believe that society hates themselves 
um, you know, they, they have taken so much from us right? because they cannot possess it. Do you think that there's a great deal of guilt <clears throat> in that they must continue because they're afraid to admit their fault? Um, yeah, they continue the perpetration. Yeah. Um, pardon me again. Um, and that's, there is, um, especially in society today, um, that guilt and if they admit guilt, if they take the responsibility, then you must take action against the atrocity. Sure. They're the majority of non-Aboriginal society, and I don't mean just white people. I mean everybody living and participating in majority society are guilty, whether they are new immigrants or whatever. Um, there is a responsibility. Um, it's like stolen goods. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, that if you are in possession of stolen goods, you are just as guilty. Those goods are removed from you, um, occasionally returned, you know, but locked up in the court system. Um, you, are, you are persecuted by uh, authorities. You must go through things. Where did you get this from? Blah, 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 blah. Um, same thing is with everything that has been taken. Illegally, we've been murdered, lied to, betrayed, deceived, primarily by the church and the government. And now they are in possession of, of all this that legally, legally belongs to the Aboriginal people of North America. And so either, either you correct that and return the stolen goods, the stolen languages, the stolen lands, the stolen um, sacred items, stolen culture, stolen spirituality, you return that or you maintain the lie and fight it so you can keep all your stolen, bullshit, murdered stuff. You know, and yes, yes, your ancestors did it and not that long ago. I mean, you've met, you've met your great-grandfather, you've met your great-grandmother, um, and they were participants, you know? I mean, I'm sorry, uh, you know, Trudeau, but your father, he, was, he, was, he embraced that in his reign to continue, you know, to continue the atrocities, continue these things. And that's why the government is, that's why the church, the government, you know, it's like they're, they're having such a difficult time. They're just blowing smoke up people's asses, mm -hmm. you know, and again, you know, putting a dab of glue on a severed limb. The Pope comes to Canada and says, I'm sorry. Uh. Oh, oh, and that fixes everything. Right. You know, um, uh, yeah. Is there anyone trying to, to make better? reparations better yeah. than that? Do we know? Um, there are. Um, there are people out there struggling for a greater reconciliation. And I'm, I'm just, every time I hear that truth and reconciliation is bullshit. There is no truth because majority society doesn't want to know the truth. They do not want to know. Then they say, oh, well, that was in the past. Just move on. Just get over it. <laughs> Would you say that to a Jewish commission? Right. Just get over it. Okay, that was then. The Holocaust happened then, and I didn't put you in that concentration camp, so just get over it. Right. You know, how insulting. Absolutely. And it is worse because the Aboriginal people of North America have been suffering over 500 years of Holocaust. And now um, they can't just, if, if they could, I guarantee they would just come in with their guns and wipe us out. If the world would not scream about it, right. cry about it, still, um, really, they would, absolutely. Have you ha have you seen anything? Do you see what they do to people who try to protect their territories, try to protect the trees, right. um, stand up against the pipelines sure. going through their nation's territory? They are brutalized. They are beaten. Sure. Um, yeah. They tried to take our burial ground in 1990. I fought in that war. Um, 
And it was a war. It was the it was the last official war. They call it a crisis, but official war fought in Canadian soil, on Canadian soil, on ground. And that was they called it the Oka crisis. Right. Um and um if if this were to happen or to be done to fall upon these atrocities to fall upon non aboriginal people and i don't mean other ethnic groups i mean white majority society the world would be screaming and wailing about it the atrocities it's like um yet it can be done to Aboriginal people. It can be done to other ethnicities. It can be done, and you know, e even even the black people, they are the only people who were not who did not come here of their own fruition. They were enslaved, and they were brought here. And yeah, man, it's too close in history, too. I mean, I think about like... It was yesterday. It was yeah. yesterday. And literally just a, a grandmother away. Like, it's it's it was literally yesterday. I can only imagine. Uh, you know, nowadays, um, someone like me, white and whatever, I, I look into my history and I, you know, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't care, whatever, whatever. But when, when I think about... Uh, uh, a black man or woman from the south or wherever for, from from anywhere uh in north america anyway um and i think about how this was just yesterday for them how they they must think it could be tomorrow it, it was so close in time who's to say this can't happen can't again? happen again it um <clears throat> unfortunately history repeats itself yeah um nothing that we have thought is new nothing that that happens is new. Everything has happened a thousand times before. And unfortunately, as, as we enter into um, more global crises, we will see um, more greater atrocities. There are, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not condemning the Russians, I'm not condemning, condemning Ukrainians. Right. You, the Ukraine is actually Russia. It's a part of Russia. Yeah. Um, what was my point on that? Um, that the atrocities will continue. That the atrocities will continue. Yet, in Africa alone, there are atrocities a thousand times worse than what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. And yet we don't hear about it. There's no economic value. There's no economic value. There is no socio-political economic value in it. There are hundreds of thousands of people being eradicated. And nobody's talking about it. Nobody gives a crap. You know? And it is led by the government, by the media, by everything. Um, uh, Eric Fromm. I believe Eric Fromm. Um is recognized, was recognized as the most intellectual man on the planet. He had a six-hour documentary, which everyone should watch, called Manufacturing Consent. Um, Manufacturing Consent um, is about the government and the media, that you don't have a choice. You believe you have freedom. You believe you have a choice. But you're, the only choice is the government and the media are giving you three to five choices. So you believe, but the end result is what they want. But you believe, oh, well, I have a choice. But it's a manufactured decision. It's manu manufactured consent. The North American, well, I can say the world, but I can only speak for North America... North America, um, <clears throat> they they are ruled. Nobody is free. Um, again, only in the hearts of Native America are we free. Um, I am... Um, there are so many things I am. There are so many things I am not. And the one in my heart is that I am free. Um, Indian Affairs, the federal government, um, there are two lists 
believe it or not, of Aboriginal people in America and Canada. We're going to say, call it North America. There are two lists. There is the surrendered Indian and the unsurrendered Indian. So if a Native American, Native North American, um, leaves his reservation and goes to another reservation, he is surrendered. If the Native American leaves his reservation, goes into the general populace, that is called reservation jumping. He has jumped his reservation. And if he um, agrees and succumbs to the rules of majority society, he is still a surrendered Indian. But if he leaves the reservation, goes out into the world of North America, and continues to stand by his traditions, his beliefs, his teachings, all these things, he is known as an un, and does not succumb to majority society. He is an unsurrendered Indian. Um, I am an unsurrendered Indian, and I will die unsurrendered. Um, I, I, it, it, it bewilders me how, how Aboriginal people can follow religions and church when, when their own was so much greater, so pure, and the spirituality. Um, is, is it fear? Um, no, it's brainwashing. Okay. It's blatant brainwashing, which but it, but which was makes, initiated by fear. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It stems from fear. It stems from it stems from um, not just persecution. I mean, we're talking brutality. Um, you, you know, and that was part of residential school to destroy the not only to physically destroy them, but to mentally destroy them, to spiritually destroy them. Um, when they could not be destroyed mentally or spiritually, they were destroyed physically. Um, the atrocities, the experimentations, the medical experimentations um, done on Aboriginal children without anesthesia, just in the name of science. But they also did that to black children and, uh, and adults. It, it's just, I mean, this, this could be an entire program for 10 years. Yeah. You know, to in to just touch on on it, Doctor Mengele for the Nazis. Yes, and people, you know, they hate that, but they don't. Turn, they turn a blind eye to yes. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and we have suffered and are still suffering. You know, over 500 years of genocide. Um, but there are signs of strength, of, of hope, because there is a growing majority now mm -hmm. that we will not surrender. We but, will not tolerate it. We will not accept. But also the, ju not just a part of the, the, the native community. There's, yes. out, there's people outside. There is. And, and that's a really beautiful thing too. Um, there's a lot of misguided people, um, non-native people, who they are empathizers, sympathizers, um, and it, it is more that, you know, they don't know what to do, but they, 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 they have this guilt of what has happened. They know and are just, and now the truths are coming out. Right. And they are becoming, society is becoming more and more and more aware of the atrocities, of the blatant lies, the, the, the horrors, the, I, I don't, I, horror is not even a, an appropriate word. Right. Um, a few, a few years ago, um, my wife and I were camping and there was a fella camping near us in a little tent. Um, and he was, he kept to himself and he was very quiet. So I decided to go over and just meet this person. Um, his name escapes me. It doesn't matter. I wouldn't reveal it anyway, but he was literally camping and living there to hide because he was a whistleblower and he's a, a, a Caucasian white guy, 
but he worked for Indian Affairs uh, in Northern Ontario. Um, and he told me that years ago when he first started, it was a case of someone from the reservation would come into his office and he would say, what can I do for you? And years later, unwritten rules by his bosses, the Canadian government, it became, what can you do for me? So it went from him being incredibly kind and giving to the Native community to, what can you do for me? Here's the big check that I'm supposed to give to the reservation right now, but you can't have it until you sign over your logging rights and the mining rights and the fishing rights. Yes. It's disgusting. Um, and what people don't understand. It, it's like, it doesn't matter. All these promises. Um, in in the Indian Act, um, when they, they say, okay, this is yours, it's all yours till the end of time. Okay, I'm just, this, yeah, I'm just yeah. surmising this in Reader's Digest version. Yep. Yeah. Or until it no longer suits us. Yeah. That could be tomorrow. That could be tomorrow. I have called them out on it on several occasions um, where they have stated, um, you know, uh, okay, this, 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 this is, is yours till the end of time or until it no longer suits majority society, the government or majority society, which is white society. Um, so it's all a lie. It's all toilet paper. Their promises are written on toilet paper um, with shit stains all over it. Yeah, it's all, they always have been. Always have been. And yet, we have been so honorable that our word is our word, and it cannot be broken. And yet, how can you break something that is that that doesn't exist, that it lies, you know? Um, they, through policies through the the genocide continues through policy now through policy through um you know uh, our culture our language you know um yeah it, it just it, it's it's mind it's boggling, boggling it man. Is. yeah that's exactly the term i would use yeah, yeah. Mind, it's mind boggling yeah yeah i i barely know what he, what to even say it's not this is nuts so meanwhile, back at the ranch. Well, speaking of ranch, <laughs> yeah. um, um, I read uh, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee twice um, in my life, and it just it, it made me ashamed. Um, and to uh, his credit, the creator of um, Mayor of Kingstown, Taylor Sheridan, um, is... Uh, he lived on a reservation for a while in Texas. This is my understanding. Wow. And he um, he's a full-blown Texas cowboy, but in his show, Mayor of Kingstown, the lessons that are being taught to the ladies in the ladies' prison is are, is, are from the book, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. And I love that he put that in the show to uh, bring back the book to mainstream America. It should be mandatory reading for for in the colloquial school system you know yeah. but hey it's like that yeah. within itself is a hundred percent yeah but i hope that people that are listening to this right now might pick it up and have a gander because it's a it's a story that breaks my heart yeah we just um um i just wrapped last week on a film called sitting bull um it's a history channel it's a um a two-part two hour um each episode is two hours and uh um that was up in the Sioux. that no that was in just out it was near orangeville oh okay and um i i had the wonderful pleasure of working beside steve wilshire um he was the stunt coordinator i was the assistant coordinator mm -hmm. um i also was stunt actor and stunt double on it i saw the pictures and uh yeah what a great and i tell you um um, my stunt team was so, so incredible. Um, probably the greatest native stunt team ever, ever put together. You had David Asinaway out. 
I had David Asunaway out. <laughs> <He's> yes. <scared. laughs> Listen, Flynn, I, I didn't get a call, man. He, <laughs> why? <laughs> now, now, I had four guys out as my stunt crow warriors, which David was one of them. And myself, um, Ty Provost, Leonard Provost, and Darcy Singer were the uh, principal Sioux warriors. And, of course, we killed our crow boys. And <laughs> poor David. Yeah, well, David dies well. You know, it's funny because I, I did it, the, the TV series The Trickster um, based on the series of uh, Native books. Um, but I needed a stunt double for one of my actors. And he, and he had this beautiful long hair and... Uh, tall and lean and my uh production designer said have you have you met david he works in the art department around the corner outside the the production office and i no so he's actually a guy who's working with randy lee mm-hmm. on the show so i walked out there and i looked at david and i said do you want to do a stunt on the show <laughs> and he he had to get kicked through a glass uh cabinet and he did it hands down as professional as anybody did. I said, just go, bud, just go. And he got kicked and went flying through this glass. And that's how David Asinaway got into the stunt game. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did fantastic. They die very well. And uh, Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, and we had such a great time. But um, Ty, Leonard, and Darcy are, I, I was so, so proud to have them out. I was so honored you know, that they came and they, they gave a thousand percent. Um, they are um, pretty much the greatest horsemen on the planet. They, um, they are world champion bareback riders, bareback relay. Um, just to see them on horses is mind boggling. I they, was the weakest link. Where are they from? Um, Alberta. Okay. okay. They're from Alberta. And I met them on The Revenant. Um, cool. You okay. know, and, and and we became such great friends, you know, on the Revenant, and they were core. The, they were among the core stunt group, and um, and we became brothers out there, and we remain brothers. That's nice. And you know what they what they gave to to me, what they gave to the production was it, it is it is what legends are made of. Um, it, it literally, literally on on that film, um, our little ragtag team became legendary. Wicked. And um, you know, I, I I will bring them on everything I can bring them on. And I'd like to get their numbers. Thank you. They are magnificent, and but the power, the honor, the dignity, yeah. and the strength and the ability um, is unmatched. Unmatched. There is not. I have not met a Native American or cowboy who can touch them on a horse. I mean, that's sweet. That's, that's how incredible. good they are. Wow. And in the battlefield, you know, they're, they're amazing, amazing. I'm proud to have them as a team. So you read the script. Is it, is it um, complimentary? Like, is it real? It is. Um, it, you know, there's only two, so much you can put in four hours. Of course. Agreed. There's only so much. Um, the story is Sitting Bull's story, um, told from the family of Sitting Bull and the Lakota. Is it a feature? It is four a... Four-hour feature? No, it's a, it's a four-hour, two-part uh, mini series. Miniseries. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that will be seen on History Channel. Love it. Cool. Okay. And, you know, to be a part of that, um, to be a part of that, to have had been a part of that, was such an honor and so amazing. And... You know, of course, you know, we do see mistakes. We do see um, how how certain things, but, you know, we have been in the industry for so long. We see these things. Of course. You know, and, um, but um, given the time, given the budget, the story was told, um, I believe, as well as it could be told. Okay. You know, again, time and budget. I right. imagine the people behind the thing yes. uh, were, were uh, attempting very to much to be oh, yeah. honorable. And, yes. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the much of the crew, much of the, you know, hair, wardrobe, so-and-so-and-so-and-so and so and so and so were aboriginal. Nice. And which Are you was, aware? Was it written? 
by a native? Um, yeah, okay. came from the Lakota. Oh, oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, and and they were um, one of the major producers as well. Okay, and um, yeah, I I you know to see. I remember growing up and seeing um, how how Custer was glorified, you know, in cinema. Absolutely, and you know that he was this hero, and he was not a hero. He was so many other things other than a hero. I he was not a that. humanitarian. He was <laughs> not a hero. He was a coward. He yeah. was a liar. He, he was, was an asshole. Yeah. That among, yeah. Even, even his pe- own people loathed him. Um, yeah. Mm. Anyway, but we had such an incredible, you know, and that's what's even, uh, I have seen in, my 32 years in the stunt industry and in the film industry, I have seen an evolution, a gradual, slow evolution. When I began, um, I was told by um, the primary coordinators of the time um, that they didn't want me in the business, that they didn't bring me in the business, and um, I didn't belong in the business. Now, was this in Montreal? This was in Montreal. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, telling, you know, and I would, I was always hired in the first, wow. Um, I'd say the majority of the first 10 years, I was primarily hired by producers and directors, not by stunt coordinators. And, um, often I would, as soon as I walk on set, the coordinator would walk off set. No, now was this just a competition thing between two men or... No, no, no. This is this, this is going. This racist. is deeper. This is systemic racism. My God. Um. Yeah. That and they would say, you know, we've been dressing up like Indians, you know, since the beginning, and we don't need you in the industry. We don't want you in the industry. And um, there were coordinators, um, that uh, you know, were literally told by the producers, well, um, if it, well, Flint's going to be here. And if you don't like it, then we'll find another coordinator. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's something that you don't hey, hear Hey, no, just a second. Either. Having made that statement, and, I'm, and I, I love that, that someone's willing to do that, um, that's sort of celebratory. Um, would you like a shot of tequila? Um, not at the moment. Really? Not at the moment. Thank you. Tequila, by the way. Oh, let me tell you about it's tequila, everybody. Maybe at noon. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, everybody, um, tequila is not an alcohol. It's a barbiturate. And tequila, there are over 80 medicinal properties in tequila. Tequila was designed for the gods. That's why during I offered ceremony. it to you. And, it, it, yeah. you know, and I figured if it's good, for, good enough for the gods, it's good enough for me. That's why I said. However, um, tequila, good, 100% pure blue agave. You got to get good tequila. Don't buy that cheap stuff. I'm not going to name any brands, but no oh. cheap stuff. Because oh. good tequila, 100% blue agave, it forces... This is what's incredible. If you are prone to type 2 diabetes or have type 2 diabetes, it forces the body to produce natural insulin. It also produces probiotics in the intestines. In the stomach, it does so many things. It, tequila, believe it or not, if you are prone to, if it runs in your Alzheimer's or dementia, it will stop it, even reverse it. It will stop and reverse type 2 diabetes. Um, I, I encourage everyone listening to check it out. So when I take my that's, supplements that's in the morning with water, should I swap it out with... I will Some no. blue agave. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have to lick salt or chase it with lime or mix it, don't drink it. It's not good. You know, good tequila. I you, personally it needs I agree with you. To be enjoyed and sip the bouquet and find something that you really enjoy. And you should have at least one shot, preferably in the evening. And this will keep you. It's okay. preventative medicine. It will keep you from getting, if you're prone to type 2 diabetes, it'll keep you from getting it. And if you have type 2 diabetes, it will eventually eliminate it. Um, there's just so much more. Very interesting. There's so much more. 
So you're it so it's now noon. Yes, it is noon. Hello there. <laughs> would, would you would you like a shot of really good tequila? Okay, let's have a shot. Of tequila. Yeah, fuck it. Really yeah. good tequila. Um, <laughs> you know what I would like to say? Um, stunts. Also, it it gave me the venue. Um, you the, tell me, Flint. The athletic venue. Oh, Casamuas. Yes. Is this doing okay? It is very good. Okay. Jays. Nice you know job. what I'm talking nice about. <laughs> this isn't what we had before. No, it wasn't a bill. Um, if, if anyone... Mm, um, smells good. Such as... I can reflect upon it as myself. If anyone um, has... Is struggling with depression. I struggle. I still struggle with depression. Um, because what has transpired, it will never go away. Right. Of course. Um, I merely have, I merely have been able to put those things in the back of my mind to where I don't think about them. And I choose, there are so many things that I choose not to think about because if I think about them, then um, I, I fear where my heart and my mind may go. Yeah, I can I understand. understand that. So if, um, what I would like to say, um, you know, to the public, um, is that if you, if it, we, um, I'm not saying what has happened to me is greater than the sufferings that have happened to you. I am saying that how we deal with them, um, athletics, exercise, train. Um, I found that, that in the ring, I was able to exercise demons within myself and within the stunt community, within the stunt field. That has allowed me to die hundreds and hundreds of times. That has allowed me to kill hundreds and hundreds of times. And I don't have to go to, to heaven. Uh, I don't have to go to hell. I don't have to go to jail. I get to, I get to live vicariously, those, exercise those demons, and I have become great at dying. This is a very interesting story. Because so much of my life, all I wanted to do was die. And so I die. And each time I die, a part of that death wish dies. Wow. With it. And every time I kill. Yeah. In film, that is. Now, we know. We know where the um, metaphor... Lies. Another, another part... <clears throat> of that rage subsides. Um, and it is training. It is exercise. It is, I say, exercise that pain. Yeah. Exercise that suffering. All things must be exercised. Whether it is to, to strengthen it or to quaff it. If, if your heart is suffering, if you have depression, if you have anxiety, exercise it. Go mm -hmm. out and train. Find something great, whether it's canoeing or cycling or lifting weights or, or getting in, in a boxing ring or an octagon or gymnastics or tennis or anything. Exercise these demons and you will be, you will find in time, in short times, a greater peace. And you will find these things sitting down in the back of your mind where they were standing up in the front of it. Yeah. Of which they have no place. Well, 100%. To that, I'm going to say cheers. You can... Oh. It's all good. Um, wow. I hope that, uh, that you feel it's been okay to sort of reprise some of these memories for this, uh, you know, for the moment. I... Um, I know that tough. Um, so when did you move to Toronto? When did you come here to do stunts? <laughs> uh, 
I'm just making a choice. In 2005. 2005. Um, I have been, um, because I am unsurrendered, I have been pursued by the government. Um, and in their pursuit, um, they say to me, um, if you want, if you want to be able to exercise your rights as a Native American, as a Native Canadian, then you must return to your reservation. Only then will we respect you and your rights. That's a control tactic. That's a control Big tactic. Because they don't want reservation jumping, especially if you remain unsurrendered. Because you're a threat. You are a threat. You are a threat because with you walks truth. Um, the the Gainier at Goa, great. Today, they it is called the great natural law, um, but it is not a law. It is originally, the Gainier at Goa means the great natural way. It's a way of being. It's a way that that creation gave us, that nature gave us. Um, it is not something that man constructed and gave us. It is what, it is the great natural way. And in that, comes our knowledge, our traditions, our spirituality. It, in that comes peace, power, and righteousness. Um, I, I have to say, this world, this society, it, it causes me turmoil, it causes me anxiety. Um, when I know in my heart of hearts, um, I am love. I know in my heart of hearts, I was loved. In my heart of hearts, I am loved. Um, <clears throat> ain't things groovy. Yeah, man. Um, thank you, um, hey, we, we, Andrew, we, Randy. Thank you, Nyao Goa. Thank you very much for loving me, and thank you so much all these years, reminding me and telling me that you loved me. Thank you, Nyao. That's cheers, brother. Yeah, yeah. welcome, man. Jesus. Let's talk about motorcycles. Oh, yeah. what what kind of motorcycle do you ride? <clears throat> <laughs> well, I've got three. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, the one bike that I have recently acquired, I actually aqu aqu acquired it um, in 2020 during the apocalypse. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, apocalypse of 2020. Yeah. Um, it is a... 1999, no, 1999, Gilmore Indian Chief. Right on. The first Indian Chiefs that they came back with since 1942. It's the same bike that Harley sued them on. Um, they sued them on the calibration of the engine, and Harley won because Indian was mom and pop. Harley was multi-corporate. Sure. Uh, they couldn't fight them, so they closed down for a better shot. And... The bike I have is number 26 <clears throat> of only 1,100 made in the world. Wow. I don't know how many exist today, but I do have number 26. And with the official plaque on the bike, everything. Where'd you find country. it? Um, there was um, a, a gentleman. Um, I'll just say Louis is his first name. Yep. And he was... Um, a makeup artist in the film industry. Oh, who, shit. Who, very good friends with boys that we know, like Bronco, for yeah. instance. Yeah. And um, it was his bike, and uh, he was selling it, and I found it. Sweet. Yeah. And the funny thing was, um, his mother um, had asked him, do you think an Indian will come and buy that Indian? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. No, I, okay, so this raises a question. I don't mean to belabor this point, but uh, um, 
cultural appropriation, um, the Atlanta Braves, the and very various other uh, names. Redskins. Well, so you, no, but yeah, now you have a motorcycle called an Indian and an Indian chief. Well, um, say for instance, I, 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 yeah, I've <clears throat> forgotten. I've actually forgotten more than uh, probably more than what I'll ever remember. Um, but um, the the chiefs, the Braves, those were um, names taken by the teams as an honor. Yes, this is my Americans, understanding. Honoring them, um, the but someone has come forward and complained. you know that's you know we've got we've got so many um, I don't know what to call them um, y- you know people people today um, there's a generation today that is offended by everything right every sincere you know the, there's stuff that we used to laugh about and we grew up with and just funny and every it took it with a grain of salt and just as humor and yet today if you say anything that they deem derogatory you can actually be arrested mm-hmm. and charged for it and i'm like how soft has society become yeah how pathetic i find it actually pathetic you know it is it's just it's like holy rollers you know um they don't know the history. They don't know the detail. Yet they blurt out because because it, being offended is popular. Being offended has become popular. That's interesting. The wind blows. And if it doesn't blow the right temperature or the right direction, I am offended. Oh, oh, we have to stop that wind. Somebody stop that wind. That's right. You know? Sure. And I think, I think people... It, have become too distracted and this is merely another sociological governmental religious distraction you know where they say oh you can't call us the braves anymore you can't call oh that's derogatory oh the chiefs it's right no it's get to the real story in in some regard it sounds like they're they're actually uh uh getting rid of something that should that that should just the history of it why, yeah. you know, they need to learn why were they called the Braves? Why were they called the Chiefs? Why were these names used? It was all in honor and respect. But and it, it just seems another way to, like, eradicate. Yes. That's what it seems like. So let's eradicate all okay, the names. Let us, let us, wow. er, no, we are eradicating the truth. But who, it's who, eradicating the truth. Who, right, who, yes. Who's the one that, who's offended? Because it, um, the government makes you think you are offended. No, no, I understand that. Maybe. But, but is it coming from the native community saying, "Why do you, you know we let's it, get rid of this name, um, let's get rid of this logo"? It, it is both, or some and overzealous it's, white white it, person. It's, it's Aboriginal people, Aboriginal um, people who who don't know their own history, who don't know their own language, who don't know their own culture, who do not um, they don't know the story. So it's a knee jerk reaction. It is all the world suffers. A great disease. And my grandmother told me this. Both my grandmothers told me this. They suffer a great, horrible disease, and that disease is lack of knowledge. Right. Um, I am an Indian. And people say, oh, I wasn't born in India. Well, guess what? I had to do this for the Scarlet Letter. I, I did stunts. I did acting. I did consulting for all the departments. I did storyboard. I did script with Joe Musso. I did script revision an hour every single night with Daniel Stewart. Um, Joe Musso, an hour every night doing storyboard. Um, All these things on this great movie. And I said, well, guys, um, Roland Joffe was director. And I told Roland a story. I said, Christopher Columbus... He was not searching for India because India did not exist as India for another 140 years. All of this information was given me to me directly from National Geographics. I contacted them. They said, oh my God, we'll be happy to help you. They sent me the exact letter, word for word, the first letter that Christopher Columbus wrote back to the Queen of Spain. And it's 
pure translation. He said, Christopher Columbus said, never before I've encountered, I'm going to make this a Reader's Digest version yeah. Yeah, yeah. again. Um, and never before, before have I discovered a more beautiful, intelligent, sharing, giving people. There is no crime. And he says, and part of that was they bathe. It's unheard of. They bathe every day. Never before have I encountered a, a cleaner people. He said, truly, these people that I have encountered are Indios. Indios is Latin for in God's likeness. The Queen of Spain, it is recorded in history from that letter. From that day forth, she bequeathed that the Aboriginal people encountered would be referred to as Indian, as in Indios, in God's likeness. Again, India did not exist as India for another 140 years. I can't, like I said, I've forgotten more than I'll ever remember. But anybody look it up and you will find out what India was called. So the Queen of Spain actually is the first to refer... She, she is the first to refer to the Aboriginal people as in God's likeness. Wow. She declared it, that, they, that all Aboriginal people... So yes, I am an Indian. Yes, I am in God's likeness. Our traditions, our spirituality, our culture, our songs, we're all of nature we're all of the earth we're all of beauty and strength and medicine and in god's likeness and choose your god that is not my place to say what god you will follow however well there are some pretty bad gods out there yeah man <laughs> yeah. however um this Great. is this is this is something else that i try to share with my people is that, yes, I am an Indian, and this is why. Yes, I am a savage, because the origins of savage are from the French sauvage, which mean, meant then, and have become bastardized by other societies, other groups, but it meant the most beautiful and natural of the land, of nature, the most beautiful, anything that was described as being savage meant that it was the, the most beautiful to behold. The most beautiful, natural things and beings to behold. That is what savage is. That's what a savage is. And I am a savage. I am a savage Indian. I am beautiful. I am wonderful. <laughs> I am amazing. And I am in God's likeness. I've always known that. You know, that also echoes in my heart yeah and and i want it one day to echo in the hearts of all aboriginal people men women and children alike so i have a question i don't know if i have answers you have an answer <laughs> <laughs> and this may just be an opinion um uh, your opinion but um i struggle with the appropriate term I don't mean to use, I don't want to be politically correct, I guess, but that's what it is. Um, when you refer to someone who is Aboriginal, a North American native, is it native? Is it indigenous? Is it Indian? Um, yes, it is. Copy that. You know, they're um, being politically correct, correct um, does not necessarily mean you are correct. Just be correct. The truth, again, um, hmm. the truth, knowledge, knowledge. But the truth could be their truth. Like the, the person to whom I'm speaking, whatever their, the way of growing up and believing, if I call them Indian, they may be offended. Yeah, that's, that's, because, that's because of the lack of knowledge. Okay. Um, they were not given this information. This information has been repressed by the government yeah. and by the church, yeah. um, which are two of the same. Um, church and state walk hand in hand. And um, it, like I said, this great disease that, that, the, that the world suffers is called lack of knowledge. Yeah. And lack of knowledge, um, what you are taught is not necessarily, it is a knowledge of sorts, but it is not the truth. You know, let it Man, be true. I agree with this so we, much. We, we had a fellow on uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, a um, good friend of Andrew's, I've known him for 20 plus years, um, 
um, Dylan Lindsay, a fine comedian, a funny, funny guy who was born with cerebral palsy. And he mentioned that a number of people, for the lack of, like for the, for the ignorance, the lack of knowledge, won't even speak to him because they don't know how. They, they don't know how to refer to him. Um, does that make sense? Like, yeah, that, yeah, I think so, um, yeah. The way he walks. Um, he describes himself as his walk as an exotic palm tree in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see it. It's, it's, it's incredible. Awesome. No, but he's incredibly funny, but he's, he's a philosopher, and um, this is how he's lived, and a uh, great guy. I think this same thing applies um, when someone is in the presence of a native person and if they're uncomfortable, they won't even approach because they don't know how, because there's been so many. I, I, well, does that make there, sense? I mean, yeah, but that's the thing is, I mean, nowadays, and I, this is another subject that's so hard to approach, but, um, you know, you call the wrong uh, woman a woman. Well, that's and, true. You know, and, 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 and it's just for whatever reason, you're now in a fucking pit dealing with shit. And, you, and you're just like, man, I was just trying to be nice. And, you know? I know. Um, so it is, it's a, but it kind of goes back to what you were literally just saying about the ignorance of the world, not knowing, and that the education that we receive is an education chosen and given uh, by somebody somewhere, it's not necessarily uh, truth. Yeah. Well, you see, it, it, it's um, the word ignorance um, is a difficult word. It's it's um, it's a quagmire. Um, ignorance. You can't say the ignorance of the world because if you do not possess okay. the knowledge, or nor have been exposed or raised with the knowledge, does not make you ignorant. Merely. You are lacking knowledge. Sure. Yeah, you're um, not wrong. And um, and to call somebody ignorant because they don't know, um, that is wrong. But, it is, but once they know, once they have heard the truth, once they have explored the truth, heard the truth, if they do not accept the truth, then that is ignorance. That is when ignorance comes into play. Okay. Um, and I pity... I pity majority society because they are not given the truth. The colloquial school system um, is not about the truth. It is it is his story. It is not <laughs> our story. It is not the story. It is merely his story. It is history told by the, we're going to call them conquerors, by the murderers, by the butchers, yeah. by the liars, by the thieves. They have written the story, therefore, it is his story, history, yep. his story. It is not my story. It's always been written by the winners. Hmm. You know, even uh, this film, Sitting Bull. Yeah, more truth is being exposed. Truth that is not taught in schools. I was not. I did not. I was not raised um, with truth. I was raised by the colloquial school system, which they will teach you what they want you to know. Not not to be totally. everything that you are supposed to be or intended, not what creation intended you to be, but what they intend you to be, what the church intends you to be, what the government intends you to be. Therefore, they suppress truth and knowledge. So that goes back to the question I had about the film yeah. earlier, is that is it is it written by an indigenous yes. writer um, and that you are telling the truth about the actual event. Is it is it about As uh, truthful, Little Bighorn? Yes, yes. It is, it, yeah. Um, it, it ends in little the little big horn sure. battle. Um, well, there's no place else to go, I suppose. Yeah, but um, you know, and again, given the time and given the budget, you know, um, it, it was done very well. And I honor, I honor the endeavor of of every Aboriginal person that was involved in this, and I honor the endeavor of every non-Aboriginal person that was involved in this. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and what's it called? Just Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this this could have been done more than just a miniseries. I imagine Sitting Bull has the life that you could just do a... 
fucking 10 seasons. Yeah, Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse. There are so yeah. many. Tecumseh. It's so many. Yeah. You know, so many legends. Um, and But in the colloquial school system, as I grew up, um, say, per se, in Florida, um, we were taught that it was the soldiers that were right and that were honest and sincere and were being slaughtered and butchered by natives, you know, but it was not. It was the government slaughtering and butchering natives to take their land, to, you know, to take the resources, to take it, you know, whatever it was. It was just, it has been lie perpetrated after lie upon lie upon lie upon lie. And these lies are now the curriculum. Well, half half educational the, curriculum. Half North America has learned their um, native education from Hollywood movies. Correct, and the other half from white guys who's teaching them. That's right, from white like professors and yeah, yeah. And but the truth these these are tumultuous times. These are great times. These are great times that we are living. We are living in a time today that. That, I mean, the, the pharaohs, the pharaohs, we are, we are living greater. Just, just the common person is living greater than the pharaohs did sure. in Egypt. Of course. Thousands of years ago. They didn't have cable. They didn't have running water. They didn't have cable. They Fucking didn't have iPhone, cell baby. phones. They didn't have, yeah, they didn't have these, <laughs> these chariots of ultimate metal and steel. Not one they single. They did not have no. the smell of gasoline <laughs> running through their veins. Yeah, yeah they yeah, didn't. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not, uh, not, uh, not uh, one pharaoh gasoline. ever drove a Hummer. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Truth. That's Man. hilarious. Yeah. And I, I tell you, it's... Um, so I, it is, you know, all these teams, see, the one thing is the teams, say the Braves, they don't even know why they're called the Braves. Well, that's interesting. I'm that sure is, they don't. That is why it's like, they should all be educated. The, the owners of the teams ever, and they, sh all these things should be, should be celebrated mm -hmm. and told why they are called the Braves. They why should they feel are it called going into their games. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, it's not a bit. Yeah. You know, oh my God, and and it's same for the black teams. You know, it's just it's amazing. Just, and I think just people have have been too distracted, and they have too much time on their hands. You know, and they're bored. They don't know what to do with it, so they become offended easily by things that are non-offensive, but they find an offensive ground in it, and they take and they gather together. Surround yourselves. Gather about yourselves, people of like mind. And then, whether they are right or they are wrong, they become a force. And they propagate that lack of knowledge by their actions. Oh my God, is that not true? And I Whoa. say, let us rock and roll, man. Because in the end, it's all rock and roll. You know? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I, I know all you, all you guys out there, all you guys and gals out there who are totally into these um, electric vehicles. I just want you to know that creating an electric vehicle and maintaining an electric vehicle is more destructive to the planet than running on pure octane. Absolutely. Now that is, that is, that is, that is today. That it's, is but it's, but it's today. Let's just say 20 years, 40 years. Is it, is it, was it going to grow into something better? I don't, I fucking don't know. Well, I'm just playing devil's well, advocate. Well, they, regardless, regardless, they're going to have to burn fossil fuels to create the electricity. They're going to have to mm -hmm. um, burn fossil fuels to create, to, to build the batteries, to build the vehicles, everything. It's just, it, it, and people are lossing, oh, I'm going electric, I'm going electric, I'm saving the environment. No, you're actually, you're actually doing a little bit worse damage to the environment. By going that way. Yeah. I say, come on, you motorheads. Come on, grease monkeys. You know. Figure this out. You know, figure this out. And, and you know, put me in that analog vehicle. Take those computers out. Put me in that because they were the most efficient, most powerful, most efficient running vehicles. Didn't need a computer. Didn't need sensors. Didn't need those things. And I'm telling you, oh, those are my. I Yo, just uh, while we're here, while we're at it, fuck it. My Ford truck, 2020, 
electrical piece of fucking shit. <laughs> I fucking hate it. No, it's the, yeah, the it's truck true. is insane. Uh, it's a two. It's a four hundred horsepower twin turbo Explorer. It's a fucking beast, and it's and it, it's comfortable. It's got all the things, but. That fucking electric system can eat it. And it's his second one because they replaced it. Yeah, the it. first one was a lemon. So was the second. And I just, uh, oh. I'm still, I'm with it. And I want to, I want to, I literally just want to torch it. And I drive a 1956 Ford pickup truck analog vehicle without a computer every day. And it's incredible. Oh, oh yeah. And I want to torch that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just wants to torch the Ford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. First on race day, baby. First on race day. So shout out to well, any, shout but to some to, it's a fucking old rebuilt Dodge, but to me it's first on race day. That's nice. <laughs> shout out to Ford, and if they hear this, they should replace that truck. Too. No shit. Send this to Ford Canada. <laughs> fuck. Well, on that note, fuck. Um, well. <laughs> let's change the game. Speaking of Fords, though, uh, you just bought some Lincolns. I did. I, 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 bought, I just purchased a 64 um, Lincoln Continental. Oh. The, and the doors. With suicide, suicide doors, doors man. Yeah, the whole, yeah. And the doors, the doors close with a vacuum. You know that? Oh, you yeah. Open the door, it goes. Wow. That, that vacuum suction on a sweet, tight door. That, that like just like lets you know everything in the car is really fresh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my just God. Like a refrigerator. Oh my God, and it <laughs> smells like 1964. Yeah, wow. yeah. Is that a good smell? It is a great. smell. I wasn't smell. there. I remember that. That smell. the leather of 1964. Well, okay. uh, it's not rich Corinthian leather, however. Mm, you can't. <laughs> you can't replace that. You just can't mm. replace that. And that. And I'm telling you what. There was nothing like the balls of a big block V8. Big time. Nothing about. Nothing like the rumble. Nothing like that. It's. It's. Uh, what can I say about it? It's got uh, the same integrity of bull balls. We're, we're, <laughs> we're all just sitting here going, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah, man. And I have a, which is the longest factory produced automobile in the history of the automobile manufacturing in the world. A 1973 Cadillac Fleetwood right. 75 series. The longest factory made vehicle ever produced i've seen the picture uh oh. the back the back seat the room in there must be incredible it is she is black on black and she's got two rumble seats yeah. oh really and she has rum fold down rumble seats what's wait what's rumble seats oh in the trunk no 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 in the okay there's a privacy wall yes. between the front cab and the back yeah the passenger cab yeah and right at that privacy wall there are two oh to you, face the back yeah you don't you don't even notice them and they just oh limo style and they fold out yeah. no kidding yes oh wow yeah. we got to go cruising man yeah man i'd oh. love to see this so a rumble seat Jeez. on some older cars was there was a, a lid at the back like a trunk okay and it would pop up so it's literally outside the vehicle cab where people would sit you could sit them in the back it's a rumble seat you can look it up okay but now cool flint is saying that his are inside has are two inside. rumble seats inside so they're folding to face the backward back uh, from the front. The no, back they face seat. forward. Oh. What? They fold down and then fold up. Yeah. Oh, and I they have face, to see this. Oh, it's, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. And I'm telling you, um, she just flies. Yeah, what's she under just the hood? Cruises. She's got a 472 factory, which produces 387 horse. And, oh, but when you get her rolling... She is no effort at all. As soon as she gets up to speed on the highway, then what you're doing is you're just feathering, barely feathering the gas. Incredible gas mileage. What are you going to do with it? You're going to slam it? You going to do anything fun? Oh, <laughs> dude, man. I'm a no, man. I'm just going to cruise, man. This okay. this baby, she is underneath, literally brand new. She has had Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones in her. She's had. Oh. She's had Guns wow. N' Roses in her. She's had like all, you know, just you name it. All the big, big names. And we're still talking about the car, right? Yeah, we're in the car. We're passengers in sure. the car. She was originally owned by a record company. Okay. And so they would come in to do recordings and they would pick up the stars from the airports and so on and so on. And so she's had everybody in her. And then she went into cold storage. She was in cold storage for over 10 years. 
Um, then a biker club bought her and they just sat on her for another 10 years because they never it, getting the parts that they needed because it needed all the bushings and stuff like that. Though she has only 14,000 miles on her original 14,000 oh miles. God. Wow. But, Jesus. but, um, in time sitting like that, the bushings, of course, the gaskets, all, all the go, rubber, everything. everything. So I had to get everything from LA and, um, nothing, any, couldn't find anything anywhere else in North America. So all the parts had to come from LA, um, some parts from Texas and, um, but she's worth every penny. Why Everything. don't you drive her today? This well, is the only city you can actually park in without a problem. I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to. However, um, I drove her up to uh, Barry to the hotel um, when we were shooting Sitting Bull. Yeah. And um, I had noticed that the rear differential seals started leaking. Started, oh, you mentioned that to yeah. me earlier. And so, um, of course, they've got to order it and it takes time to come in. So I brought it back. And, uh, you know, so she's at the garage, but she'll be out today. Wicked. Sweet. Yeah. So the, after the, the podcast, gasket, you're going to go pick it up? Oh, yeah. The gasket, the gasket came in yesterday. They said they'd have her ready today. And um, the only thing I have left to do to her, other than the air conditioning, um, and all that is is the dash dash switch. Yeah. But you nowadays, know. all you have to do is roll the window down. Yeah, that's right. It is autumn. Oh, yes. And, uh, oh, Yeah. No need for air AC, but um, but oh my God, just uh, just the carburetor. I just have to rebuild the carburetor. But even with the carburetor not running properly, yeah, she is a screamer, man. Oh my, so God. much fun, oh, sweet man. She, yeah. and she rolls and and everything is brand new. All the control arms, the linkages, the bushings, and underneath again looks like a brand new vehicle because she's never ever seen winter. Right. Never, you know, in her entire existence. What a blast. Yeah. And she'll be fifty years old. Wow. Next year. Yeah. Well, to me, that's a young. That's a young. In a few more me. months. <laughs> oh, but oh, let me tell you that sixty-four Lincoln. Oh, I can't wait. I just can't wait. That sounds like a song. I might hire you to come to pick up some of our guests. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I'm telling you that that Lincoln is she's going to be a rat rod. She I'm turning her into a rat rod. Okay. Oh, the, the, so you're gonna chop the Lincoln. Oh, the, oh yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna lower it. Right, okay. I'm not chopping the roof. Oh okay. Yeah, because I you know I like that uh, clearance that headroom, and but it would look sweet, wouldn't it? It would. But I mean, just to lower it a couple inches. Sure. And oh. are you gonna put those great big wheels on them? The great big, like the like the fat ones yeah, on the, the tw- back, no, the like little the tiny wide. thin tires, but the big wheels. Yeah, I'm not decided. You know, I saw I saw an old uh, an old Chevy yesterday, like a '50s style. I don't know if it was a Bel Air or what it was, but it was real fucking sweet. And it, uh, it the wheels on the back might might have, it could have been a foot and a half, something like that wide. Yeah, it was unbelievable, <laughs> man. And I mean, it was one sick car. But you, I mean, if you're gonna do the low rider thing and sort of rat rod it out. It's not necessary. The thinner, the low profile tire kind of thing is kind of cool, but the like rims and stuff, yeah, you yeah, do yeah, that yeah. kind of. St- yeah, I um, yeah. I've not decided what I'll do with the rims. Yeah, yeah, you probably should. Yeah, yeah I, I prefer <laughs> I prefer like my truck. I prefer a, a a normal rim. I've I have an old set of '70s Kragers on there, uh, but more rubber to fill that wheel well on mm-hmm. a pickup truck. Oh yeah. I just I just like rubber. I'm not that I like lo- I like low wheel. profile. He likes the big slam. Wheel, I like the spoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like I really like that. Yeah, I, I I you know, I just want to get the I just want to get it needs a little very little body work. Um the interior is immaculate. Um oh my god. I can't wait to go cruising in this. Uh, thing. I want to Yeah, man. Yeah. Me too. You know. And I mean as a rat rod, she's going to be flat black. And, uh, but as a rat rod, man, it just, oh, and I've already got, I've got my rat fink rat who's going to go on the hood. Oh yeah. You oh know, my God. <laughs> oh my God. that's hilarious. Instead of the Lincoln emblem, it's going to be a rat. You know, oh, if, if people knew you, man, you just, I get it. I'm so, a, I'm a grease monkey, man. Yeah, I'm but a motorhead. like the bicycles you make, 
Oh yeah, like the bicycles. People. Yeah, I wanted. To, I wanted to ask about that. Actually. Yeah, they, you have to go online and research the bicycles. Yeah, every yeah time my choppers. In, every time you're down incredible. in Florida, you're like, do you do that up here as yeah, well? Yeah, I've got I've got three choppers up here and two choppers in Florida. Okay, and you ride around the streets. Oh uh, yeah, uh, downtown. Oh there? yeah, man. It's like he, my bikes are eight and a half feet long. He has and shown up to work on them. High. Oh, oh fuck. yeah, I've, I've never, ridden, I've ridden never them seen them. Rode them to set. So when when you but when you go down to Florida, you ride these things. Oh yeah. Dude, man, they're so fucking awesome. No, they're they're incredible. You know, and and you just cruise, man. You just cruise. You know, big giant ape hangers and stretch choppers and one more. Yeah, I'm in. I I, I love this. You know, my granny, my it was my granny, my mother's mother in Florida who built my first chopper. Really? Uh, yeah, I was like 14 years old, and she said, "Son, she goes, you got to start saving money to buy a car." And I'm like, "Well, granny." I'm like, I don't want a car because I love my bicycle. And, um, of course, that's what boys do, man. That's what little boys and little girls, they want their bicycles. That's their means of transportation. That was my pride and joy. And one day I get off the bus. I think I'm about 14 years old. Um, I get off the bus, and my granny's got two sawhorses set up outside. And I get off the bus, and she's outside, and, and I just stand there. Bus pulls off, and my bicycle is across those saw horses and she's got a hacksaw and she's cutting it apart. Oh Jesus. And just <laughs> lump in my throat, tears running down my eyes. And she says, What are you standing there for, son? She goes, What are you standing there for, son? Get over here and hand me those bags. Well, um when I was growing up down in Florida, um, there was this um automotive store called uh Firestone. And they had a bicycle department with the ape hangers and banana seats and all that stuff you wanted on a bike. Right on. And on a cool bike. And she said, bring me, and they were Firestone bags. Uh-huh. And I brought their bags. And she starts pulling out ape hangers. And Granny so she, went shopping, and, man. And she was chopping so my bike apart. she was custom fucking She custom the shit. built me a chopper. That's she, a, yeah, that's she a took, cool lady, man. She took <laughs> plumbing pipe. And cut them and fit them on my forks and made long extended forks out of them. And she's out there, you know, <laughs> just building a chopper. She said, and she said, well, you're never going to get it with the car thing. She said, you got to get a car. I don't want a car. She goes, well, you're never going to get a girlfriend on a bike. She goes, you need a car. And I said, well, I don't want a girlfriend. I'm 14 years old. I don't want a girlfriend. I want my bike. I came home. She was chopping it up. My heart sank until she said, Give me those bags. I started pulling stuff out of those bags. She built term. She said, "Son, if you're gonna ride a bike, you may as well be cool." She's like, That's "I, need, what she I said. love this." I woman. need my son. She's she's like encouraging uh, 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 your interests and pussy. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. She said, "If you're gonna ride a bike, you may as well be cool." Shout out to my and grandma. I've been riding chopper bicycles, <laughs> building them ever since. Yeah, man. So yeah, cool. so she set you on that path. She set me on that path. That's a trip. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I and and all Cheers my motorcycles. G-Ma. Yeah, <laughs> the original gangster. <laughs> That's hilarious. She was hellfire and damnation. Love it. And I'll tell you, um, yeah, she set me on that path, and and even my motorcycles. My Indian doesn't have ape hangers yet. Right. She's yes. got the giant moon bar. She's yeah, what so, color is that bike? She's um, black and white. And okay. and I'm telling you, it's like she belongs in a museum or a showroom. Yeah, That's I, how perfect she is. Why, do, why did I think it was green? No. no you're thinking of like John's bike or something. Nah. No. No. No? Old, old Harley, but... Okay. Yeah, no. I've seen pictures of you riding it. Um, no, the, no, 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 no. Not Those, this new chief. That was the, uh, um, the pictures of me riding, that was an Indian drifter. What color is that? A black. Like, all my bikes are black. Um, I've got another Indian drifter. I've got a, um... I have to, I have to adjust the colorization on, on my, uh, computer screen. <laughs> your eyeballs. Because <laughs> I yeah, keep yeah. thinking green. But I've got the, uh, 1600 Midnight Star with 18-inch ape hangers. Gangster Fender. She is so, yeah. so gangster. Um, and that's down in Florida. And, Influenced uh, by Granny. Yeah, uh, everything, man. It's like I've been. It's like I don't feel safe. Yeah. 
if I don't have eight hangers. Yeah, man. I I, I, I have a I have a Harley Decker and I put eight hangers oh, on. Oh yeah. It. Yeah. It's so much better. I remember when you got that bike. I remember when you painted it. The orange one? Oh yeah. Yeah. That oh. was a long time ago. That was, that was a while. Oh, that, that thing's sweet. Two yeah. years ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, um it is it 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 is, I say greater than grace. I say um I say, Giori wa yungori wage ne ganyant ge hage hod na shani ye jungoyate ne aunza ekwadadi. You know what we're what we're talking about is so important, and it's important for native people, for the ungwahume, for for non-native people. It's important that we talk about these things, that we share all these things, why we are, how we came to be, what, and I think most importantly that we share um, how we have managed to survive. Um, it was all these things um, that, that have saved my heart. You know, it is, it is getting on my choppers. And every time I get on a chopper, I still see my grandmother cutting up my bicycle. I love that. You know, I still see, you know, and, and she was emotionless because get over here boy you know if she was just doing something get over here boy she was in open those bags bring those bags over here and you know it was she knew what she was doing she knew what she was doing that she knew that i didn't want a car she knew i wasn't interested in cars i was not interested in girls at the time and like she said if you're gonna ride a bike you may as well be cool and that's fucking cool. You know? And She's she, a cool lady, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and she took me to get my very first car. My very first car. Um, I wanted something little. And she's like, no, no, no. Um, you need to have a real car, a strong car. You know? And because she was more concerned whether I was going to be in an accident or yes, not. Because I, I was a new that. driver. Yep. Mm-hmm. So um, her mechanic... Um, took me, he had a 1969 factory made 351 Windsor factory three speed. <laughs> Look, I love how he leaves the it's <laughs> Ford Mercury Cougar. Okay, oh, oh, cool. Okay, oh my god, but and it still sh- wasn't a very big car. Uh, well, it was more solid than the little cars that I wanted. Oh, okay, you know. And but hmm. let me tell you what a dream machine. Yeah, I had Ford so Mercury much. Cougar. I didn't want the car. I didn't want it until I got in it, man. Nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, nineteen sixty nine. You would burn <laughs> those tires in all three gears. I bet. Smoke them with that three fifty one. I mean, you know, I love the Cleveland. The Windsor is a small block. The Cleveland is a bigger block, um, lower and wider. Oh fuck. Um, <laughs> But, and you just found it. <laughs> yeah. But the Windsor man, it's like she was a screamer. Yeah. She was a screamer, man. And that was that was I had vehicles before. Oh yeah. Amazing. And she was she she was this metallic forest green. Yeah. Man, that, this thing's a that you beauty. could only see that it was green in certain lights of the day. I knew something you owned was green. Oh, that was it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beside my green underwear right yeah. now. <laughs> you know, when I got here, they were white. <laughs> oh, God damn. What is happening? Yeah, he's so envious. <laughs> it's the tequila. Man. Tim uh, Hortons. <laughs> yeah, it's the Tim Hortons. Dude, this car. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay. Yeah. But cool. I'm telling you, it was... Gotta get one of those. Um, and my grandmother said, if you can't fix it, with bailing wire, a hammer, a pair of pliers, duct tape, and a screwdriver, you don't need it. Yeah, that goes back to being a real vehicle and not what we're yeah. doing today. Because what we're doing today, I can't even touch it because I don't have a computer degree. Absolutely. I look under my hood of my truck, and it looks like something from NASA. Uh, yeah. I, look, I look under the hood of my other truck, and I go, oh, I get this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. self-explanatory mm-hmm. to most points. It's I have I have crews down the road duct taping literally picking up pieces duct taping universal joints together, <laughs> you know just all kinds of stuff, man. Oh my God, um, the end of days for that Cougar, the '69 Cougar. Um, I didn't have any money, however, we did raise hogs, 
And so she started burning motor oil. And so we would, we would slaughter our hogs and cook the rinds down to extract the fat because they used to, in World War II, I, I don't know about World War I, but I know World War II, they used to fill the engine blocks of the tanks, army tanks, with hog lard. I was going to say, you, what? Yeah. you made because, your own oil? Yeah, so we made our own, I made, uh, so whenever I was low a quart of oil, I just pour hog lard into it. Man, let me tell you, it smelled so good. Yeah, it smelled I'm like I'm running bacon. down the road smelling. That's fucking insane. Dogs used to follow me everywhere. <laughs> it's like I'd park the car and dogs would gather on my car and start smelling because it smelled like bacon. Oh, let me what? tell you. That's hilarious. Oh. I'd be looking for breakfast spot every time I hopped in my car. <laughs> <What the>? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I'm t- you know, it's just, just being raised, I, I have to say, you know, um, my, my grandparents gave me more than life. The, when I was seven years old, my youngest friend was 50. Because my own, we live so far out in the swamps. Sure. My only friends were my grandparents' friends. So my youngest friend at that time was 50 years old. There's a development of maturity yeah. there. Hmm. And, and just the stories. And, you know, it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Just, you know, I was, I was given so much more. Now Though me, so let, much let me, had been taken. Let me ask, um, when you were seven and your youngest friend was 50, were they native? No. Okay. So, okay. No. no, just swamp people. Okay. Grove you, people and swamp people. You know, I got to say that... Uh, I think there's a, a show in this. The, but, though, yeah. though life uh, in, in its uh, areas uh, was tough, um, uh, in a lot of ways, it's worth the wisdom. It, it, I would not change a thing. I would not, knowing, um, having lived and knowing what I know today of yesterday. Yeah. Um, it is, but, give, I, but you get to teach this. Yeah. But I, I believe it is my mother that I miss the most. Um, so let, let me, ask, I'm sorry. What happened to your parents? Um, it, they were murdered. Yes. Um, at the same time. No. Um, my mother was murdered later during the investigation. Um, by the same people. Jesus Christ. Um, so just a minute, your father, the wrestler, yes, was murdered. Is that correct? Yes, correct. And then during the investigation of that... And I witnessed it. What? Yeah. Uh, I, I was upstairs. Um, you know, I, I, I got out of my crib. Um... Went to the uh, stairwell, you know, hid in the stairwell and watched it. And uh, sorry, Flint, I don't mean to. What the fuck? Um, I am certain that 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 there are multitudes of children who have. Oh, um, without a doubt, the same. Without a doubt, you know, witness. Well, it's like not like you're the only one. There's no way. Yeah, I'm. I'm not the only. So, one. was your father, was your father murdered because of the industry he was in with the wrestling, or was it a racial thing? Was it something else? Um, Sorry, it was something else. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather not. And no, no, get into and it. that's fine. So then, during the investigation of finding out who murdered your father those same people whoever murdered your mom yes um okay we can get off this um yeah we should um yeah were they ever caught no fuck okay so let's move on to something else fuck me sorry crazy man but yeah uh yeah um yeah, so I ride a Harley Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh um, shit! I can't wait to ride, man. I can't wait to ride with you. Yeah, no, it'd be. Uh, oh, I can't wait! I can't wait 
for you guys to be in the back of the limo. No, no. The, I will be your yeah, driver. Can we? Oh, we'll, man. We'll bring the tequila. You stay oh. sober. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Sounds it's just, good. Um, I'll drive. You can sit in the back with, uh, with Randy if you want. I'll, I haven't, I haven't, I'll do the driving. I haven't ridden in the back yet. No, I don't imagine yeah. you have. So what? why did you drop the Jeep, the Jeep life? Because you really had a thing going there. Yeah, I, I, I had um, in, I guess, in, in the accumulated time, um, I had had 26 Jeeps, Wranglers, Whoa. because I don't consider anything else a, a Jeep, Jeep unless it's a Wrangler. Oh, I love that. And... Um, the Wranglers were getting bigger. Um, yeah, remember but, the old ones? Yeah. Oh, oh my man. God. Oh my God. I had, I had the 70s, 76, 70, 77 oh, and 78. God. The seventies with all Jeeps with all yeah, V8s. Cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. hundred percent. Such oh, a God. tiny little vehicle with the oh, big monsters V8. with the V8s. Yeah. It, that was a, that was a vehicle. That was, that was. Yeah, no doubt. And um, and it, now they're really expensive. I know. And no, the, those ones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You find those in good shape. You can't touch it. Um, it just got to the point where my stunt equipment was growing. Sure. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. My therefore my trailers inch. were getting larger. Yep. And, For sure. Um, and as the trailers got larger, I found that the jeeps did not have the weight nor the power. Sure. Um you know, to pull or control the trailers um, because you found the trailers will start pushing you around. Yeah. And um, so I went to a larger vehicle. I I tried the Suburban. I tried the Escalade. I just, I didn't buy them. I just tried them and I just felt like this isn't right. This isn't right. You know, it's and not you. it wasn't me. And I never, ever, ever wanted a Hummer. Um, I was never impressed with them until I sat in one and drove it. And I just figured, you know, um, there was this Hummer and I'm looking for vehicles. I, you know, and I'm, I went back to Florida. I'm looking for vehicles in Florida. And anyway, I just, I was online, found this Hummer in the GTA. Um, but it was online for two months and I watched the price dropping, 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 dropping until I'm like, Hmm. So I called the guy, I was on my way back to Toronto and I called the guy and said, Oh, I'll be there you know, in the next couple of days and I'd like to see it. And so I went and saw the vehicle and I rode it. The turning radius is immaculate. It has the same, if not better turning radius, the H2 than my Jeeps. Oh, wow. Let alone the 6.0 Vortec, the power, the, the versatility, the comfort of the vehicle and the towing capacity. It just, but the, the versatility of the vehicle blew the blue, the Yukon, the Suburban, the Escalade, the the Navigator, just it, they didn't even compare. Wow. To hmm. the to the what I f- see as versatile. Not to mention, if you couldn't pull a complete U turn where you're where you're turning, you could actually go up on the lawn and go through those bushes yeah, and then down to. back. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Grand Theft Auto style. Just yeah, bubble, and it's bubble. a great it's a great shag out vehicle, man. Um, shit hits the fan. It's like. Um, you can just drive over and push everybody out of the way. Yeah. You know, it is. And um, the H1 was listed or is listed as uh, as a military assault vehicle. The H2 came out as an officer's vehicle and was listed as an urban assault vehicle. Um, then it was made hmm. offered to the public, to the general public. <clears throat> um, do they still make Hummers? They do the new one, but eh. You know, too much electricity, too much electricity. It's a computer much, again. You know, and it's another computer. Um, you know, the H2, it's so military, military grade. It's got an entire roll cage underneath it protecting the drivetrain. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. The weight of it weighs 8,600 pounds. Um, wow. It, Dang. It's, it's just, you know, it, it's... Which one's, the, and, which one's the military one? Uh, the H1. Okay. H1 and the H2. That's the OG. Yeah. And there's no frame. They're just a unibody. Um, the H2 is a frame. Yeah, the H2 might be. Yes. But when we flipped one for the FBI. What, oh, for, yeah. For the, I, for the BMW, BMW show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to build the frame or to just put a roll cage in it. Oh, wow. What a trip, though. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if anybody wants to look it up, it's called The Escape. 
It's a BMW movie. Stars Club. By oh, Neil yeah. Camp, and I was a stunt coordinator. John Blair Johannes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John Barenthal. Um, but Dakota Fanning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blair, uh, Blair flipped it and landed. It was incredibly perfect. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm just giving myself a plug. That's, the yeah. aside, that's aside the point, but it was <laughs> bad as fuck. So. Yeah, I, um, I, I really enjoy the vehicle. I really enjoy it. And the versatility. Um, I... I you know, have a property up north. Yeah. And um, just the, 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 you know, it has a shorter, wider wheelbase, um, and, but the power. Um, I have, it, say for instance, um, there was a guy in this brand new, uh, you know, the four-door um, Ram. Um, I don't know, whatever, they, whatever the big numbers are. Um, anyway, he's pulling a 21-foot, uh, pontoon boat out of out of the lake I'm on, and I hear all I hear is woo, woo. this is going on for like 20 minutes, and I'm like, that's a lonesome sound, and I know that sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so um, I went over, and he is buried to his axles. Oh no, shit! You know, sounds like a to Top pull, Gear trying to really bad trying one. to pull this, and so I pull into this wet hole, and I'm like. You know, I back into it and I'm like, looks like you could use a little help. And he's like, you got a chance. I said, no, but I have a snatch strap. So I toss him the strap. He hooks it on. And I didn't I just put in four wheel low because it's it's full time four wheel drive. The only thing I, I would have liked to have seen in it is if you could have unlocked sure. the front. Absolutely. Um, it would have performed better on the highway as far for as sure. gas. Yeah, for sure. And, you can just it's, slid it around corners it's better. It's full time. Yeah. It's full time four wheel drive. I just locked it in low, low gear, and I barely gave it any gas. Just, just crawled him right. He and his trailer stuck up to the axle. The, uh, you know, it was wet. Yeah, it was wet. So the the pontoon boat was also buried in mud. Sure. And um, but effortlessly pulled him out. You know, nice. and and that has been one of a dozen occasions in such fashion. Um, yeah. It just, but now you feel obligated to take everybody out of their situations, don't you? Well, I don't feel obligated. It's how my granny raised me. Okay, you fine. Know, Back it, to Gma. <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, it's like, um, and you, you don't, if if you're thinking about what is the return for you, then you need to go home and, or you need to go into the mountains and find yourself um, because that's all wrong. You know, if there's somebody in need, you help them out. Um, no ants, ifs or buts. Well, I mean, I'm saying you're five minutes, you're, you got to get to work, you know, five minutes. You don't want to be late. There's always a side. <laughs> you know, yeah. But I'm telling you, you know, if it, if it's something that you can prevent or assist in, what's five minutes between friends? No, I, Hey, yo, you know, I'm I not going to get into something that's going to keep me there a whole day No, no. because if you're driving a Hummer, it's only going to take you five minutes. Yeah. You drive, you drive past someone's van and it's on fire. Fuck it. No, 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 no. I know I've got fire (laughs) extinguishers, been there, done that. You know, I, oh, um, I I was coordinating a film in Sault Ste. Marie and this was about maybe already now, I guess a month ago. Um, I'm sitting at the red light and this Jeep is turning and this car comes and just T-bones the Jeep, flips the Jeep over and is pushing it. The girls in the car panicked. Um, of course the front end of the car is all pushed in doors are so, and I'm just right there. So I drive over the curb up, boom, jump out, put cones out right away, jump, go to the girls in the car, ask them if they're, they're in shock, you know, rap on the window. They're all startled and jump. I'm like, are you okay? There's a, yeah, we're okay. So the door wouldn't open. So I had to rip the door open. Um, then I, Got them out of the car. I was more concerned about a fire because the engine was smoking. Sure, and stuff. sure. So I got my fire extinguishers out. Boom, boom, boom. Set cones out. You know, for what to... color were the cones? Cone color. They were orange. They were so orange. everyone driving by thought there was a film set. Yes, somewhere. these orange. weren't ice cream yeah. cones. <laughs> were they? No. And um, then mm. um, immediately went to assist the young woman in the jeep, in the jeep. out. Um, I took her. Because she had some abrasions, um, she wasn't broken or anything, and I put her in the Hummer, 
Um, it made sure the girls were on the other side of the Hummer, you know, made sure everybody was comfortable and blah, 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 blah. Because I was there like, I guess maybe 12 to 15 minutes before, um, the cops or the, uh, a ambulance, fire, yeah. you know, and, uh, just made sure everything and everybody was safe. What kind but, of Jeep was it? Um, uh, four Obviously door Wrangler. A shitty one. Oh, it was Ford a Wrangler or, though. Four door eh? Wrangler. So you didn't have to school her in no, no. the proper Jeep. <laughs> yeah, okay. No. And, um, but I mean, it was really unfortunate, but, but, um, I'm glad I was there. Of course. Because the girls were in shock. I calmed them down. You know, and got everybody just relaxed and calm and safe. No, what's interesting about that is that... Um, that's what we do. We're yeah, stunts. Uh, of course. Because because on set... That's exactly what we, I was going to say. We exactly are the yeah. first responders. Absolutely. We are the absolute first responders. You, and you, you yeah. enter that mm -hmm. situation with a cool, calm, collected head because of experience. Yep. And just move forward. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just get everybody to safety and everything safe and clear. No and you explosions. understood that because the Jeep was a Chrysler or a Dodge that it might end up in flames. Well, uh, I wasn't concerned about the Jeep. It was the, <laughs> it was the. I, I don't recall what the other vehicle was, but I was more concerned uh, regarding the other vehicle. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Because the Jeep was a Wrangler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it was just, and I have video of it too. Wow. So I'll show you guys video later. Oh, fuck. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, of the wow. event. Like yeah. from your dash cam? No, 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 or no. Just... I, I got out with my camera. At, once I got all the girls to safety, yeah. all the women oh, you just to safety. It's for evi I, evidence. Yeah, yeah. For, for evidence. Wicked. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, um, it's not memories. Yeah. It was, you know, but it was just really cute because, you know, then, uh, um, the first responders, you know, all they had to do was just go to my Hummer and, you know, make and sure everyone everybody was, there. was there. Yeah. I checked for, I checked for, <laughs> yeah, everybody was there at the Hummer. You know, make sure every, I made sure that, you know, there were no abrasions, no serious abrasions, no broken bones, sure. everything, you know, just, you know, what, what, what we do. It's what we, um, as stunt performers, it's, it, innately um it has become innate yes it has no, become you're absolutely correct it has become instinct you know that that's what we do for each other first thing we do is like we immediately go to each other you know to make sure that the other is okay you yeah pull out, I've, you I've pull out an armadillo and say you should have been wearing this <laughs> yeah you know, some advil and tequila oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> but you're right i've been involved in some accidents actually on the road and this, the same thing happens. You just take over. Listen, I'm the boss at work, so I'm the boss when I get to the accident. Yeah. It's got no issue. I just move forward. I tell this guy to call 911, this guy to do this, and I, and I, have, no, I, I have no issue just taking over. Oh, yeah. And, and then you have to back off when the cops well, get there because they hate it when you tell them Oh, yeah, yeah, do. yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> then after, after the paramedics, everybody and everything, you know, and the cops are at, after... They said, um, we've got it. Thank you so much. We've got it from here. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. I'm like, fantastic. Yeah. I'm out. So I went and collected my cones. And of course, the cops are like, uh, can you leave the cones? Are those your cones? <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. Is that <laughs> yeah. is that your tequila? Is it? Because <laughs> we... Yeah. <laughs> but it was... Uh, yeah, so I just gathered my stuff and and split, man. Just hap just being happy that I was there. Yeah, you know, and that's, you know, one of over a dozen incidences um, where I was glad I was there. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. and that's it. You yeah, know, so and I it's just it isn't it isn't about you know getting glory or anything. It's about it's it's just knowing that you were there to to protect. And hero a moment. Yeah. Yo, you're that yeah. kind of guy, man. You know, you, you, no, no, you're we just are. that kind of guy. We are. We, uh, we yeah. Are. Hey, I, I, I agree with that. But, you know, uh, whoever's listening to this might be like, whatever. I don't know how anyone reacts, but you're just that kind of guy. You're just a helpful, happy, just like he was saying right off the top. You're just that kind of guy. Yeah. I, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know. You said not so everyone's like that. No, no, you're absolutely correct. Um, uh, honestly, you're in my experience. You're, you're one of a kind. And I think, I think you're incredibly brave in the choices you make. And no, and, and it's just that, um, now I'm going to get emotional. Oh God. There's no crying on a podcast. <laughs> when you having, having learned what you've, what you've taught us today about your life, 
in your past. Um, and I see that on a, any given moment of any day, you're making a choice to be who you are to me. On the outside, like you said, um, you're... Um, I, I, I'm just... I'm just coming off the top. You, uh, you're, you're the, like I said before, you're the most joyful, love filled human being I've ever had the pleasure of hugging. And, um, um, if that's a choice you're making, um, you are incredibly brave for having made that choice. Um, it, it, it is a choice. Um, I, I could be down another path. Um, and, and for everyone, what, what society doesn't understand is that um, it is a choice that everyone's suffering makes. And it's okay to fall down. It's okay um, to weep. Um, because we need to. But pulling your boots up tight and getting back out there is a choice. Um, many, many have succumbed to their pains and struggles and because they did not, I believe they did not have the love they needed that I received. Um, and in the end, it is, it is the love and it is, you know, um, not wanting, say for instance, not wanting to see, um, a tragedy in that accident. It was, it was, um, I could have left them there in their trauma. Um, we could leave people, um, stuck in a trauma, which will affect them throughout the rest of their lives. But to be, um, the one, to be able to be the one that rescues them from immediate trauma to pull them out and say, are you okay? It's okay. You know, I'm here and you're not alone. Um, that's the, I think that's most important. Yeah. And otherwise, you know, they would have dealt with, um, an increasing trauma. Um, I was dealing with increasing trauma. And it was from my grandmothers. It was, um, it was from individuals. It was, it is from you that, that, that trauma, which I exist, which exists in me every day, but is alleviated, is softened, is manageable, is bearable. Um, that knowing, you know, time goes by and when we see each other, not a moment has passed. And, and that love lives in my heart. There's no, time doesn't exist between yeah. friends. And, and, you know, even, even to help a stranger and have no contact, not even knowing their names, um, knowing that you that you were able to make a difference. Um, that reminds me how much I have been loved. That I was only able to make a difference because instead of being increasingly jaded, I was increasingly loved. There are a lot of people out there that could use that uh, word of wisdom um because there i mean there really are just to that degree there are two paths 
There's paths of many kinds, but to that degree, there's two paths. It's the jaded one or not. Uh, you could use it to better yourself or possibly just continue hurt further yourself. damaging yourself. Yeah, but not not necessarily damage uh, that you inflicted on yourself, but just... Well, we do. Um, <clears throat> you know, some some turn to vices. They call them vices, but but they are merely attempting to ease the pain. Right. You know, and it isn't... It's a Band-Aid. It, it, it's merely a Band-Aid. Totally. Over a gaping wound. Yeah. Now, unlike tequila... That that is staving off uh, the potential of diabetes uh, type two. <laughs> well, and, hold on a and second. Alzheimer's Blue agave, and dementia. It's the only thing I Blue can think agave, of. Blue agave, buddy. <laughs> Blue agave. They gotta know this. Yes, must be. I mean, if we're gonna good. if we're gonna support this uh, medical tequila, which I I do. <laughs> wholeheartedly um blue agave taken orally um uh flint i think that this is a good time um f- right now for me to give you this sharpie and you're going to sign the table anywhere you wish Not on yes the- yes we have this stupid blanket here now it, it didn't um, work but uh if you can you actually take your stuff right there and just sort of move it over to past your past your Tim Hortons cup, and just flip the blanket. Shout out to Tim Hortons. Yeah, so we got we got a whole whack of think about it stuff okay. on there. Think yeah, about it. Yeah, you, give some thought as to what you want to do and how you, you want to sign it. You can draw a picture. You can do anything you want. You can draw a dick. Whatever you feel like doing. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> you can draw many of them if you Make wish. Make sure you have room, bud. Uh, yeah, and you, you can also do, do it, it here. here. You can do it anywhere you, you want. Do it anywhere Everyone you like. Everyone does it over there. You know, um, before I do that, um, I, I, I dreamed once and I woke from this dream and, um, there were words in my head that from, from what I saw in the dream and I grabbed my pen and I wrote and it is why um, I choose life. It is why I choose love. And what I wrote um, is maybe profound. Um, the story or the song I wrote from the dream um, moments after I woke in the middle of the night, I call it walks with me. As I breathe deep and live life, I find that I am not alone. I travel now myself and I, myself before I had not known. We live in dream, myself and I, of the nations echoing their medicine, of the nations echoing their wonder. We live in dream, myself and I, and now our heart like wild horses thunder. That is how I live. Wow. It's going to take the whole fucking table. Yo, do it. (laughs) Start here and go down. And again, sorry to all the Spotify listeners. You got to hear his... The Sharpie. Sharpie scribbling. <laughs> yeah. People who watch on YouTube can see you doing it, but the people on Spotify can only hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and Apple and uh, various others. Yeah, Spotify, Apple, iHeart. Yeah. I wrote Wild Horses Thunder. Beautiful. Sweet, Thank man. you. And remember. Did you sign your name? Yep. Yes, I did. Flint. Okay. Flick Beagle. That's my stage name. Cool. Flick I, Eagle. I don't. I don't want everybody to know when, Flint Eagle. At that. Flick, when, when we're Flick done, Beagle. Flick Beagle. When you were done, we'll, <laughs> I'll scratch behind your ear. Yeah. Um, you know, um, it is. It's about a journey. Um, in the Gainier Goa, the great natural way, the first thing it says when you have lost yourself and entered into a time of dissemination and confusion, when your heart is broken and you're you're suffering and confused 
to go into the mountains and return to yourself. And it isn't that we need to embrace these things. We need to return to ourselves. And we need to see that, that even when you are alone, you are not alone because your spirit walks with you. And to be Haudenosaunee, to be Kanyankehaga, to be Ongwehongwe is to walk in two worlds, to walk in the physical world and to walk in the spirit world at the same time. Walks with me. As I breathe deep and live life, I find that I am not alone. I travel now myself and die. And that's the most important, is to get to know yourself. Myself before I had not known. And this dream came to me when I had decided that ending my life was not life. It was not my endeavor. It was not my legacy. But to run, to live like wild horses, my heart, myself and I, our heart, like wild horses thunder. And I say, I don't know you out there, but I hope, I hope you are able to spend time with yourself and I hope that your heart and you will run like wild horses. Thanks for coming, Flint. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. I was wicked, man. Thank you. Hey, D. We need each other. We need each other. I have needed you. I have needed, I have needed you guys Nobody knows. They only know a little bit today because of you, of me. Yeah. And, but nobody knows how important it is to, to be loved, to feel loved, to be told, I love you. Um, I know we do it every time we see each other. Yeah, I love you, man. And, and it soothes my pain. It heals my heart. And in that love, I am given the reins like wild horses thundering to ride those thundering horses. Thank you. Nyawa. Nyawa. Flint. Cheers, man. Jesus. That's it. Cut it. <laughs> Cut it, D. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs>